Okay, so why do we need forecasting? Well, my one of my greatest mentors when I started in finance many years ago told me the most important thing in hotel finance is understanding the revenue. If you understand the revenue and you control the revenue, you can control the costs more easily. So why forecasting? Well, first of all, any budget is probably out of date by the time you actually get it authorized these days. So, so they're, they're good as a target, but they're not that good at actually giving you the, get, driving your business um, on a day-to-day -day basis. If a budget's too strict, then you're, the team are running after it all the time. They get demotivated and, and you lose that control over, over, over the impetus. And then if it's too easy, then you just loot, you're demoralizing your staff all the time. So I always assimilate the budget to a roadmap. You go on a journey and you look at your roadmap when you start your journey. You say, I want to get to there, I'm going to use this route. But during the journey, you will have accidents, uh, works, all different things. You may even get lost. And so that's why you rely on the GPS to keep you on, the, on track of where you want to go. And for me, the forecast is the same thing. It helps you keep on track to your final destination. Um, as, as you're going through the year. Um, it also obviously helps you control your costs. These days, you can't wait till the end of a month to see what your costs were. You have to be controlling them on a day-to-day -day basis, especially payroll, food costs, these big, big hefty um, costs in your business that actually are guided by the revenue. You need to be able to control them regularly. So forecasting for me is like a circle. You, you do a forecast, you, you see how it goes, you learn from it, you do a better forecast, and eventually you get better and better at the whole process. When to forecast? Well, normally I always used to forecast every two weeks for the next this month and the next month ahead and have a rough idea for the three months further, just so that I could control cash flow, et cetera. But in these stark times, it's probably every day and every week that you're actually looking at a forecast seeing where things are going and, and modeling it to try and get a better idea of where your costs need to go day by day. Um, but whatever you do, always make sure you encourage your team to participate in the forecast because that way they'll buy into it and you'll get more, more, more motivation from them to actually achieve that budget. So um, also if you're forecasting, it's better to do it day by day because some, some companies, they do it just a month at a time. Well, if you're forecasting up one particular month once a year, you're not really going to get good at it. Whereas if you're forecasting particular days of a week constantly, you will slowly get better and better at that process and you'll be able to tie down much better the whole, the, your whole forecast. And also, if you just do a month and then divide it by 30, then all you'll have is 30 differences. Whereas if you start to forecast day by day, slowly your debt you will get better and better at it and there will be one or two days that actually give you a difference and they're the days you need to concentrate on was it what happened that day was it was it an extra event you would hadn't forecast for did it rain and you didn't get that many clients in what happened to make that and how can you make sure that next time that happens you can improve your business or you can you can deal with it yeah to make sure that you're always maximizing your revenue options so, so also, if, if you've got bank holidays, for example, if you've got a weekend, an extra weekend in a month, that totally changes your month's forecast because you may have good weekends. If you're not doing a forecast day by day, you might miss that and you, and you might throw out what you're expecting to forecast for a particular month. But as you go, you sort of, you, you, and you keep forecasting and keep forecasting, you'll hopefully get better and better at it. So, Obviously, like I said, the main point for me of forecasting on a daily basis is that then you can push that into some kind of payroll system to know exactly how many staff you need each day, how much cost you're generating each day. It, it's a good idea in these payroll systems. You, you, have, you, you know what your, 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 your sales are every day. If you see your overspending at the beginning of a week, you've got that possibility to pull it back by perhaps reducing a waiter at the end of a month, at the end of a week or whatever. But if you don't actually have clear idea of where your sales are on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not as easy to do that. 
So um, forecasts, I always for link my forecasts to my daily revenue report. And I always set a column at the end of a, at the end of a month of what I forecast at the beginning of a month. That way, it's usually what you've promised to the owners or the chief executives, and it gives you a clear idea of where you're going. So you have an, a, like a, a restimation of where you're going to be at the end of a month, and you have your goal, which may not be the same as budget because it may be better or may be worse, it may not be the same as last year, but it's probably something which your team will, will eagerly work towards because it's something they got involved in and it's something which is more up to date. So, um, oh, took just a minute. Uh, so, make sure that you you have some way of comparing easily your forecast with with what with your daily results. I usually use red and green just to just to help with that. Um, and always, like I say, make sure that your team buy into these forecasts. I quite often will adjust my forecast on a day to be slightly more accessible, make a song and dance of it when they actually achieve that, that forecast. And that way, they'll be more intrigued, the staff will be more in, in, in line to actually try and achieve that forecast every day or because they can see something good coming from it. So obviously when you're building the forecast, you can't just pluck a figure out of the air and say, oh, I think I'll have an occupancy of 50 next week. You have to base your forecast on solid results. I always find a PMS system will have some way of pulling out the on the books figures, but in an Excel format. And there are simple formulas that you can then add those on the books figures into whatever format of the forecast you have. Um, and always have on the books plus your pickup. I usually copy the, the, the previous on the book figures up at the top of my forecast so I can have an idea of what the room pickup has been over the, next, the last week or two weeks, just to give me an idea of how the business is going as well. Some people have complicated revenue systems, um, but if you haven't got that, that level of technology, then, then it's an easy way of at least tracking how your pickup is going. And always make sure that your pickup average rate is what is in line with what you're selling at um, for that sort of period because it, you may have a lower rate on your books because you've sold in advance and now you're selling at a higher rate and it gives you a, a better idea of where your revenue is going to come to. Um, so like I say, keep trying at the, at the forecasting, keep revising your forecasting because as you do that, you'll get better and better at it and that way you'll, you'll have a much much better idea of how your business is going and you'll be able to plan more easily and you'll be able to introduce more actions to try and rectify what you're expecting. Um, when it comes to F and B, always make sure you use KPIs. Um, so you'll, you can, you can uh, estimate how many sleepers you'll have from the rooms you're expecting or you should know your F and B capture rates. You should have an idea of how many residents you have each day of a, how many non-residents you have each day of a week, and you should have an idea of your average spends, food and drink, and you put that together in 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 your forecast, and it'll give you a much stronger idea of where you're expecting to be on each each day of a week and in each area of your business. So, um. Give, a forecast gives you greater comparison to, to identify gains and losses. Um, and also it gives you, you can also even possibly flex it by the market segment. I, in some businesses, based on whether it's conference business, leisure business or corporate business, I've been able to flex the number of guests I'm expecting to come down to dinner, coming to breakfast. So, so it depends how, how much information you have as to how complex you can make your forecast. But more importantly, you need to study those differences, figure out why things changed. And that's why you need more detail in your statistics. It might be that the reason you, you, you were low that day is because you had less diners from your residents. Why did you have less resident diners? Or you had less outside diners. Was it because it was raining? And those will give you an idea of, of for future of how to how to try and adjust your forecast to bear those things in mind or, or how to do promotions to try and improve uh, those days. 
And if you don't have that data, it's a case of starting now, because, because the sooner you start to collect the data on the KPIs, the number of covers, the number of non-resident covers, the number of spa treatments you do, all this information, the sooner you start to, to collect it, the sooner you can start to build more reliable budgets and forecasts. And obviously your forecast now, as you go forward, will help to bring, build a better budget for the future because you'll be, you'll be building on more solid ground. So always very important. So I've, I said before, revenue reports. Why have the daily revenue report? Well, before I mentioned about having the, the GPS, but the GPS works on the scenario, you know where you are when, you, when it, it tells you where you need to go. That's what the daily report is really for me. It's something that tells me where I am to help me guide to where I'm going. So why do we use a daily report? We use it to inform our team about what the business has been, where we've had successes, where we've had failures. It also uses it to plan ahead. If we know moving forward, we've got gaps in our business, we can try to do promotions to, to stimulate that those and fill those gaps or we can plan our payroll to make sure we don't overspend on those periods of time uh, and finally we can use it to motivate i mean there's nothing there's nothing wrong with telling when the staff achieve their forecast telling them yes we've done it congratulations having a celebration having having an extra pudding on a better pudding on in the staff canteen simple things like that but it just helps to motivate the team to know that there's something good about getting forecasts what format should a report take? Well, in my time, I've seen all sorts. I've seen very basic sort of free liners of a couple of figures. I've seen fancy ones where you have graphs and pie charts and this and the other. And it almost helps, it's, it's almost so colorful that you don't actually realize what's going on. And then there's the odd, the odd one I've seen where literally that's a Bible of 15 pages and nobody ever gets past the first page anyway. So, so I always tend to stick to two pages, a brief outlining page and then a more detailed page that the management will want to look into in more detail. And on my front page, I will always make sure I have the, the, the top where I have the, the big headline figures, food, drink, leisure, um, the key statistics for occupancy. Uh, and, and then going down, Going down, uh, sorry, sorry. So the main important thing, like I say, is the daily figures. So always make sure you have that area of identifying what is good and what is bad. Like I say, I use red and green. And that means that even the most enumerate members of your team can see exactly how you did yesterday. And that will help. When you can go into an, when you can sort of say to them, well, how did we do yesterday? They can feel as though they're actually part of it and they can actually, you know, they can actually know what the figures are talking about. Yep. Always make sure that you include figures like the REVPAR, the ADR, the occupancy, uh, TREVPAR, but always make sure that your team know what those figures are about, what they, what they mean. Yep. And include last year and budget, obviously, because they're as important. But, it, some, but I always say the most important thing is always your forecast. And across the page on my, on my revenue reports, I always make sure I have a week to date. Some people say they have like the, the seven days of the week. As far as I'm concerned, the most important is where we are to date this week. So I have a week to date figure and I will always guide that figure on last week's days. So, it's no use comparing a Sunday with a Monday. Um, so I will always make sure that on the last week figures, I, I have the last physical week of Monday to Sunday compared to this Monday to Sunday. So I have a clear idea of, of where it was. And again, I'll have month to date figures for the actuals for last year. And often what I do is I put in a figure that says, how much do I need to get to get to budget? Because it kind of puts an, another, 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 look outlook on things you know if you're if you're making three thousand a day and it says you've got to make four thousand a day to make budget then it's a stimulation if it says you've got to only make two thousand a day then you think oh we're going in the right direction we're, we're already ahead and most importantly like i say always make sure you've got your 
outlook for the end of a month. You've got your forecasted outlook with your actuals included, the forecast of where you said you'd be at the beginning of the month last year and budget. And then always make sure you break down the, your F&B areas into, into the different departments and the meal periods. You may not have a team which you can sort of divide and say, this is the restaurant team, this is the bar team. But if they know where the business has gone, and where, where it's been good and where it's been bad, it'll help them to have a better idea of, of where to focus on in future days. It always make sure that subtotals are clear so that everybody can, everybody can understand the report. And, and on the second page, like I said, I put more detail. And, what, and that's not hard to do if you're collecting the statistics because you can put in your, your capture rates, your average spends on food and drink. You can put in your average spends on, on treatments. And, and all this information will help to figure out where things went right and where things went wrong. And by doing that will help you not only to guide your business and your promotions, but also help you to forecast better as you move forward. And slowly you'll, you'll get better and better at the forecasts. And finally, doing all that will help you to increase sales and obviously increase profit. So how do you achieve a good report? Well, the main thing to get a good report and get a quick report is to have all the information in one file. It may, takes time to set up to start with. I used to use a 365 day forecast and I set it all up at the beginning of the year with a budget last year, et cetera. But it, then it means that on a daily basis, a lot quicker to, to pull those figures. And if, if you've got a good PMS system, you can pull a trial balance off that PMS system that tells you what, what you've done each day and you can link that with the, the cells in your report. So nobody is manually entering any figures. The worst thing I find is it's somebody puts in a wrong figure while they're building the report. Everybody thinks it's a good day or a bad day. And then we find out that actually somebody's made an error. So as much as you can automate it. And the same with the covers. Most PMS uh, EPOS systems will allow you to record covers, but it's usually just the covers. I always make sure that they have a log of resident covers, non-resident covers, and if necessary, conference covers. Because that, and I, I get them to put it into a simple Excel sheet that I can just paste in the report on a daily basis. But that means that I'm getting much more information about who's actually in my restaurants, who's actually in my bars, who's coming down to breakfast, et cetera, who's coming out from outside for breakfast or dinner. And, and if you've got a booking system, usually they, you, can, you can work out ways of doing this. So if you have walk-ins, you always make sure you mark that they're either the residents or non-residents. And you just make sure if everybody who's in the restaurant has gone through your booking system and you can mark it easily at the end of the shift and just make a summary and say, right, so many, so many, so many, and that's it. But as, you as people grow the, 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 the covers, they'll start to understand it better. I mean, I've, I, the number of times I've seen the num 22 covers order two main courses in, from a POS system, it's quite strange really, but, it, but it, it, that 22 instead of two will throw out all your figures. So unfortunately I haven't yet found a system which records covers better than your own team. And if they're built, bought into the whole forecasting process, they'll want to make sure those figures are recorded correctly. And more than anything, check that it all makes sense. I mean, if you have an average spend on breakfast of 125 pounds, you know something's not quite right, won't you? But make sure your team are checking those on a daily basis. And who do, you, you, who do I usually get to do the report? Well, I usually get reception to do it because they're there seven days a week, so they can do it every day to make sure that figure comes out. Um, they often are more numerical than possibly other, other operational members of staff. Um, you don't have to have people in the office doing that job. They know when they've run the day end, so they know when they can do the report. And it also increases their awareness of the business. And as they increase their awareness of the business, they'll learn where the anomalies are, are within the business. And they'll look at it and say, well, that looks wrong. And if it is wrong, or as in the business was bad that day, they'll learn to be able to say, oh, actually, because we had a bad day, because this, this, and the other. And you will develop those, those, those people into real revenue managers, as it were, because they'll start to understand the business and they'll, 
and they'll like, start to understand how their part of the business can help to in increase the rest of it, how they can recommend the restaurant, how them recommending spa treatments can actually increase the business. And so it all comes around to it. I always make sure when I send out my reports, I send out a copy and PDF so the managers can read it easily. Nothing worse than getting a, uh, an Excel document on your mobile and trying to figure out what, the, what it says. And, and if you've got a PDF, even the, the people who have not got good sight can always blow it up nice and, nice and big and actually see the figures. So, so I always make sure there's a PDF goes out to the managers. And then to the, I always make sure there's a copy printed and put on the back uh, in the notice board, a back of house, because that way the whole team is part of the process. The whole team understands where you've gone. And that way you can walk into the kitchen and say, guys, how did we do yesterday? You can turn around the kitchen porter. Did we have a good day in the restaurant? And because it's red green, they'll be able to say, well, well, yes, it was a good day because it was green. You know, it, 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 it makes sure they're all bought into a process and they can all start to think about how their little grain of sand builds the whole castle. Yeah, so, so basically that's, that's my take on forecasting and revenue. I hope you've uh, you found something interesting, something useful. And if there's anybody got any questions, then please fire, fire away. Anybody? Sorry, um, we do have a question from Julian. Uh, Julian, do you want to read your question out or, or, or are you? Uh... Yeah, sure, I'm happy to do so. So Robin, I was just, I mean, forecasting is clearly a skill without a doubt. Um, and, 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 you know, the, even taking that all the way back to daily budgeting, which, which not many places do, but there's a, there's a, a huge, hugely positive reason for doing it because it helps in that forecasting piece. Um, but there are going to be properties uh, that are going to have lost financial controllers. Um, there are going to be properties which need closer uh, financial management. Um, is there scope to move to an offsite service? Is there scope to to um, kind of yeah. you know, bring in third parties like you? And 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 how would how would that work? Well, yeah, the I mean, skills aren't in house. I mean, I don't want to promote myself too much, but I mean, the whole my whole the whole ethos behind the way I work is when I've worked in individual units, I've probably spent about 60% of my time doing admin work. So they've paid a high level wage for somebody to just do admin. Whereas the philosophy behind Hotel Synergies is, is that I do the tricky work. I, in, I implement forecasting documents, get people trained to use them, re daily reports, implement the cost control systems. And then I get them to do all the admin work. And, 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 and that needs to be the way forward with sort of smaller units. They, 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 don't, they, they don't need somebody on it. They either have an accountant who actually doesn't give them much support or they have an expensive financial controller who, who probably is spending half their time doing admin work. And it's not just, and, and I, I've said this for a long time, it's not just financial control, it's the sales managers as well. You can have some very good off-site sales managers who will who are very professional and very skilled, who you wouldn't be able to afford as an individual outlet. However, employing them on, on an off-site short term sort of temp part-time basis, as it were, where they do the intricate stuff and give give the admin staff in the hotel the, the more the more basic work to do, it, it it's cost effective and it probably brings a better a better skill and quality to to the hotel that they wouldn't normally have thought about. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. We also had another question from uh, Rose, uh, which is a good question. Um, Robin, what's your advice in forecasting short and medium term as uncertainty when things will get back to normal? 2022 inquiries are down, for example. So what do you think about short and medium term? It's, it's a bit of a piece of string question, isn't it? It is a bit of a piece of string question. Uh, but like I say, I mean, this is why I do a day-to-day -day forecast uh, because I bung in the OTB figures. I, I'm looking at them constantly. And so, and I, and everything else rotates around those OTB figures. So, so the, although it's hard to set up to start with and you, and, and you need to collect all that information, once you get it going, it does kind of give you an automatic idea of where you're going to be 
And, and if you're updating the OTB figures daily, then you can see your forecast adjusting automatically and you can see your pickups changed if you do what I say with like copying the, the previous times and, and, and all that's kind of helps you to actually get a better idea of where your business is going and where it's flowing and, and what's changing. And so it, I find it a lot easier to do that than just trying to, to sort of estimate what might be happening in the future. I'm a, I'm a bit of a detailist, as it were, but I find the detail helps to make it much easier to, to, to sort of to read the crystal ball for the future. On that, on that point, um, could you and, and Julian uh, elaborate how your forecasting interrelates into what Julian was talking about last week in terms of a dynamic business planning? Well, yeah, it, it's the, the whole point of a forecast, if it's done well, it is dynamic. So, so you're, you're constantly looking ahead. And, and like I say, I mean, I have a 365 forecast and I'll bung in the on the books figures for the whole year and I'll be, look, and I'll be looking ahead and I might be saying, oh, there's something, something strange in the future. We need to, perhaps we need to, perhaps we need to put a, a cap on, uh, make it a two, two night stay minimum or something like that, just to make sure that one weekend you don't end up with, with um, a Friday that's empty and the Saturday that's full and all that sort of thing. So, so by doing this sort of regular forecasting, it is I, I consider it to be a dynamic process of constantly looking at how your business is changing, where it's going and also looking at where your shortfalls are. And as you see where your holes are, you start to do other things to try and motivate business for those times. I think, I think that's amazing. Julian, Julian, do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were saying last time about that scenario planning. So, you know, your plan A, plan B, plan C, and, and okay, there's some notepad and pen work that goes on to figure out what all those scenarios are. Um, but once those scenarios are built, popping them into that forecast sheet really starts to bring it to life. Um, and and then, then you start to bring in other skill sets, so, you know, picking up on that, do we need to do a promotion that weekend? Do we need to restrict stays? Do we need to do that? Uh, all of those technical things that come in, that's where you start to bring in the other parties that, that will influence that. And, and I know that we've got uh, Sarah speaking on, on revenue management in a, in, a, in a short while, a few weeks as well. And so it's that, you start to flag up those holes. Where are those holes? Right. Who do we need? What do we need? Where's the skill sets to, to have a damn good go at plugging those gaps? Yeah. Thank you. Can I just ask, um, what's your advice on um, <clears throat> working out pickup at the moment? Um, I'm working with a venue and we're, we're looking at scenarios and things like that, but it's just, it's hard. So yes, you can forecast each day if things change and keep an eye on all of that, but it's using historical information before over the past few years, we've got a really good idea of what we're gonna pick up. And so it'd be really helpful if-, if I, I think the way, the way I look at it as, yeah, you can look at sort of last year's historical, but you can't now. No. And, and you can't even look at 2019 because we may not be there. But if you're looking at it on a regular basis, your historical is last week. Your, your, no, it, it gets to that stage of things where if you're regularly looking at your forecast, you're regularly checking your OTB and how much you've picked up. And you're saying, wow, that weekend suddenly picked up, that, that, this, this, this day is suddenly picked up. It's much easier to actually start to think, well, I can see a trend here. You know, I can see that actually these, it's growing quicker than I expected or it's growing slower than I expected. And that's the that's the beauty of, of these of these forecasts is that you actually when you're in this situation where you don't you you have very 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 little clue of yes. how life is <laughs> to go, on, it, it it's it's a case of actually putting structure into that into that process where you're actually basing your ideas on something physical, even if it's only literally what what's happened since last week. You know, it, it's it's that it's that sort of basic and yeah. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Robin. Brilliant questions. Uh, just to say thank you for those that joined us uh, after we'd started. Um, that was Robin from uh, Hotel Synergies. 
I think we need to move on because we're quite aware that uh, 11 o'clock we said we've finished and we've got another superstar performance coming through now from Claire from Venue Queen. who's going to talk to us about knowing your market, knowing and understanding your market. She's got various hats on, so that's quite interesting. But again, obviously, if you've got further questions, you want to take it further, then please do speak to uh, obviously Robin, Claire, etc. Anybody around the screen later, we've got contact details so please do that it's just that we wanted to try and keep it to an hour unless we get paid any more then obviously we'll go into extra time that's absolutely fine 